Hello and welcome to our webinar this evening, Member Motivation. This is part of Lions University that's brought to you by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. My name is Lion Wendy Kane and I will be coordinating behind the scenes for our webinar this evening. would like to, to go over a few items with you. As a reminder, if this is your first webinar, we do record this for people who are not able to participate live. So if you participate verbally, just um, be advised that we are recording this for others to use as, at a later time. We also will use a couple of different um, participation mechanisms in tonight's webinar. We will be using the questions pane to uh, respond to a couple of questions that our um, faculty have prepared throughout the course of the webinar and I put those in the chat pane so that you could get a preview to think about what uh, how you might respond to those uh, but we'll have appropriate times through the course and you can respond with the questions pane. We uh, may also have an opportunity to get some verbal feedback so if you have a microphone or are participating by phone then you can um, raise your hand and then we'll call on you and unmute you so that you can participate with us and either answer a question or ask a question, um, share ideas and things like that. So those are the two, two ways that we'll be participating in tonight's webinar. The bachelor's program for Lions University is designed around helping our clubs be more successful and our club members be more successful. There are 10 required courses as part of the program and this webinar, Member Motivation, is one of those required courses. We also, in order to complete the program, um, have at least five electives and you can see that we have a, a variety of electives that you can choose from as part of the, the bachelor's program for club success and at least five of those will need to be completed um, in order to complete the bachelor's program. On the, also in the chat pane, I put a link to the handout for tonight's session. If you have an opportunity to download that either before we get started or in the early stages, it has um, all of the content material that Lion Judy will be sharing with you on the PowerPoint presentation, so you won't need to worry about writing down notes and, and scurrying to jot down information that we have on the prepared slides. Um, so if, even if you have to get that after the webinar, that's the information that's, that's readily available for you. Um, and then if you want to just be able to, to jot notes on other ideas or suggestions that, um, that you see. So uh, let's see, a couple people are saying they don't see it in the chat pane. So let me try to send that again here. Um, I said it before we started the broadcast and so it may not have been viewable to you. So let's see, I'll be sending that now. Thank you. Some of you are getting it now. So good. Another good lesson learned. I've mentioned on a few occasions how we're learning in this process as well. And one of the things that, that Lion Judy and I talked about was, I wonder if they actually got those. So with that information, I will also repost the three questions that Lion Judy would like for you to think about um, as we go forward. So you should have another item coming now. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's see, that's uh, what we need to know about the bachelor's program. Also, as a reminder, lionsuniversity.org is where a lot of our information is available to you. We update the frequently asked questions with some of the, the support questions and emails that come in. So I really appreciate those of you who have been participating in our first several courses and as we, we revise and, and improve our processes, we're capturing a lot of information there. Also, each course has a specific page where we have the handout. Uh, we'll also have the links to the video recordings if you want to go back and watch this later or if you want to refer a friend to the course. And there will be several um, supplementary resources that you'll be hearing about and we'll have direct links there. And also, probably most importantly, is we have a link to where you take the test to get credit for having completed the course. So um, 
So you'll definitely want to keep, I hope you'll keep, lionsuniversity.org bookmarked and use that as a resource often. Okay, and after we've covered the logistics business, it is really my pleasure to introduce to you our faculty for the member motivation topic. And Lion Judy Dudley is a past district governor, but uh, like myself, she and I both um, I think are most proud of the title that we, we share with everybody in lionism, and that is lion. And she's very excited. She's um, got a lot of experience in helping train lions and is also um, very interested in continuing to learn in her own leadership development. So I think we're kindred spirits and it is again my pleasure to uh, welcome Judy to our webinar, thank her in advance for her efforts and preparation for tonight's webinar and with that um, come on board Judy. Okay, hi I'm Lion Judy Dudley. I'm a new member of the Baton Rouge Southeast Lions Club. We recently moved to Louisiana from Pennsylvania where we had been members of the West Penn Lions Club for more than 20 years. That's really quite a change too. The reason for the move was to be closer to our three adult sons with more additional motivation from the fact that you just don't have to shovel rain. My Lions passion is leadership development and my personal hobbies are cooking, knitting and reading. I would like to know more about you and invite you to contact me at the email address on the slide. And if you would write that down, please, because that I did not put in the handout information. Uh, and let me know who you are and why you are taking this course. In fact, I would be available and enjoy helping anyone, anytime, as long as it's about Lions leadership. So like Lion Wendy said, this evening we're going to do course 101 of the bachelor's program. Lions University, and remember, sponsored by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. This is a great investment of the forum in the development of Lions, and we are certainly thankful to them. This is a required course, and I am honored to be your guide tonight. And I think at this point I'm supposed to throw it back to Lion Wendy to talk about the objectives. This is all you, Lion Judy, but our objectives for tonight and what, uh, what we've got prepared are to define motivation, look at some of the motivation theories that kind of help guide our philosophies on motivation, and probably more importantly, consider how those theories apply to groups such as our Lions Clubs. Um, get some information and feedback from you, those questions that we put in the question pane, and how can we take these theories and put it into some practical application with our Lions members and our Lions clubs. Okay, thank you, Lion Wendy. Now we have to think a minute. Can you or I motivate Lions, or we can, can we motivate anyone else for that matter? I believe the answer to that question is both yes and no. We can all certainly motivate ourselves. Unfortunately, we cannot pass that motivation on directly, nor can we go to the pharmacy to purchase a motivation capsule or tonic. What we can do is to decide to use the behaviors that will encourage other lions to motivate themselves through engagement and inspirational leadership. The next slide. In a sense, we are considering motivation as a process that causes lions to work together toward established goals. It arises from internal feelings about external stimuli. I cannot motivate you, but if I know you well enough, I can ensure that stimuli are present that will cause you to want to act in a particular manner. Motivation is internal to the actor rather than caused by someone or something else externally. So now we'd like to survey you a minute and get a question here. What motivates you to act in a volunteer setting such as your Lions Club? And if you would, as Lion Wendy explained, you can type your answer in the message board and we may be able to share a few with you.
I can't see any answers yet. We, can you, we have Ryan, a, Wendy? We have a couple that are coming in. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Knowing that I am doing my part in helping my community, that's from Lion Lisa, Lion Michael, the good feeling it creates. Lion Keith mentions I enjoy help. Uh oh, it's scrolling past. Sorry, Lion Keith, I lost it. Oh, I enjoy helping my community. Um, knowing, like knowing that I'm helping others. Um, Gloria, knowing that I make a difference. Uh, Lion Tony mentions seeing a need in the community and being a part of an organization with others who want to help. Yeah, I think that part. Of, uh, let's see. Great feeling of satisfaction. Lion Dawn. Lion Barber shared a, a slight nuance, making use of my ability to organize and share information. Uh, Lion Joanne says, feeling what I suggest or do is appreciated. Uh, let's see, paying it forward was a part of uh, Lion Joyce's response. Believing in the Lion's programs it's from Lion Kendra. Looking for <laughs> Lion uh, Eugene shares, fun, warm fuzzies. That's for sure. Uh, Lion Kendra also shares, they helped, Lions helped me as a child. So that's a good motivation. Meeting an unmet need. Uh, a couple of these are, are sounding a little bit like what we've already shared. But um, what I will do, because we've got a lot of good input that I think as we go forward and talk about motivation, and even the other questions that you ask later is we will um, take all of the responses that are here and we'll include the responses on the discussion forum because I think it gives us a great perspective of beyond just why we are motivated or join or some of the other questions and it lets us see a broader picture of why others of our Lions members may have done these things. So I'll take all the responses. I won't include the names, but I'll just take a, a rundown of the a bullet list of the responses so that you can see the variety of those when we're done here. Well, thank you on that, Lion Wendy, and thank you for the reminder, too, that this course is going to last more than the 45 minutes to an hour we're spending together tonight. It will go on as far as long as the participants want it to go on through the use of the uh, discussion board. Okay, and now I think we're, are we ready to move on? Okay. One of the first theories about, the first really intricate theories about motivation was Maslow's theory, Abraham Maslow in 1946. He introduced what he called the hierarchy of needs that was based on the premise that the most basic of needs must be satisfied before an individual can progress to needs at a higher level. His theory is often represented using a triangle with the most basic needs at the bottom. In this illustration, the most, most basic needs are called physiological needs. I like to refer to this level as survival. The needs at this level include food, water, clothing, just what it takes for you to survive. Unless the basic needs are satisfied, all of an individual's activity will be at this level. Would this individual have the time and resources to be a lion? The second level is safety and security. At this level, one is motivated to find shelter, protection, and safety from harm. If an individual's safety or security is in danger, other things just don't seem to be important. The third level is social needs, belonging to a group. There is a need not only to interact with others, but also to belong to feel like a part of the group. An individual now would be motivated to join a Lions Club, a large group, a group of 1.35 million members, all working toward the same goal. The fourth level is self-esteem. How you perceive yourself can be a strong motivator for behavior. Interestingly, though, not everyone's need for self-esteem is satisfied in the same way. Some individuals feel high self-esteem by having many friends or by just being accepted as part of the group. 
Others need the power of a title or a leadership position. And still others desire to perceive themselves as serving others and bringing good to their communities. Each of these factors and many others can motivate an individual to join Alliance Club and fulfill his or her needs for self-esteem. The fifth level is self-actualization. This is being the best that you can be. Maslow believed that only a few people reached this level. Personally, I believe that many lions reach this level. The next theory is the McGregor theory in 1957. It's an interesting theory. It was presented in a book called The Human Side of Enterprise. And actually, it was talking about people in their employment. But it does have a little bit to do about the reason why you want to do things. McGregor proposed two motivation theories describing how leadership viewed employees. As you look at the characters of the workers seen by their employers, you will see that the characteristics of employees in these theories are directly opposite from each other. It would be my late belief that lions would belong to the theory Y group. That would suggest that lion leaders would cause lions to be motivated by giving them responsibilities and the resources to complete them. By making lions part of the decision-making process in the club, and by rewards and recognition to satisfy their need to know that they had performed well. In 1957, McClellan introduced a theory, it's often called the acquired needs theory, and he proposed that there were, uh, there were basically three individual needs. They're acquired over a period of time, and they're shaped by one's life experiences. Most of these needs can be characterized as being related to achievement, affiliation, or power, with some overlap as shown by the diagram. Considering lions, individuals in each of these categories would be likely to join a lion's club. Some thought should be given, however, to how these very different individuals would be motivated to remain lions. High achievers should be given challenging projects with attainable goals. They need frequent feedback. Lions with a high need for affiliation perform best when working with others in a cooperative environment. These are not the individuals who enjoy working on a project by themselves. Lions with a need for power like to be presented with leadership opportunities. Committee chairmanship and club offices would motivate them. This next slide I put in I, because I just thought it was an interesting comparison. It compares the Maslow and the McClellan theories. Please note that a fourth need, need for survival, has been added to McClellan's needs to correspond to the lower levels of the matter of the Maslow hierarchy. But it, it's interesting how you can really start seeing how the two uh, theories sort of correspond to each other. They just use different names to talk about the same thing. And you can see how the lions are going to fit in, in the higher portions of that pyramid rather than in the lower portions of that pyramid. Okay. And I think we are ready to join with survey question two, as why did you join Lions?
Okay, a couple of responses are starting to come in, Lion Judy. Actually, they're coming in a little quickly, so it's scrolling right past me. Hang on just a moment. Um, that is good, good feedback. Let's see, visiting clubs with my district governor husband showed me what good things lions do. So that was uh, from Lion Joanne, I think. I just lost my place again. To serve, uh, joined, that was from a couple of folks mentioned, to serve, to give back to the community, fulfilling the need to serve. Uh, Lion Tony said, I researched what the Lions did and I liked the mission. Um, let's see, <laughs> looking for a good deed to do during my free time. So, I like that one. A lot, of, a lot of times our potential members are talking about not having time, so that's a... a uh, a great response. Uh, I had a res let's see a response from Al. Social. I met some interesting fellows and wanted to know more. Was asked, and more importantly, I stayed because of all the fun and good things we accomplish. Uh, Lion Lynn shares to gather with like-minded people. Um, again, Lion Kendra shared as a child. Lions helped get glasses, and that was that was really important for a six-year-old. And this has been a, uh, so left a left a mark, a positive mark. Uh, Lion Barber shared, I've been around lions for years as a spouse and thought I could add to my local club. Let's see if we have for the fellowship. I uh, want to be a part of an organization that gave back to the community. Um, let's see, we've got a couple other ones that will go through a couple longer ones. Again, I'll put information up with our responses. Let's see, Lion Winster shares, I've been serving since I was three years old. And the people saw how the their local club worked. Um, someone was a leadership development instructor, this is Lion Reba, at a, looks like a university and was asked to present a program visited the club, found out what they were about, and joined at the second meeting. So those were some of our, our responses for why our Lions joined. And again, I think this will be interesting to go back and look at afterwards and see the variety of, of reasons that at least the people participating here joined, and hopefully others will add to that conversation on the, the discussion forum. Well, th thank you, Lion Wendy. The thing that I find most interesting, because I've I know where we're going from here. Most of the things that are going to be coming up have come up already, and that is a good thing. It, it sort of validates some of the things that we're going to be saying. OK. Individuals join lines for reasons that provide motivation to be an active member. They arrive with enthusiasm with the expectations that their needs will be fulfilled through the opportunities that are presented to them to serve, to lead, and to socialize. Effective orientation of a new member should involve a plan to match activities to the member's interests. By giving prospective members an opportunity to be involved before coming to join will give them a better idea what the club is all about. So an invitation to help with a project that interests, interests the prospective member can allow him to experience the special feeling of serving, those fuzzies that somebody mentioned, of serving those in need, and other special feelings of bond of friendship that exists within the club. You'll notice the way this is organized, that uh, in each section, we're going to talk first a little bit more about theory, and then we're going to go on to the practical application. What are some of the things that you can actually do? So in recruitment, what are the, some of the things that you can actually do? Focus on service. Provide a description of your signature project, the one that identifies your club, working with youth, Youth, vision services, feeding the hungry. Interest in motivation inventories. inventories, And these are things that really will help you in working with your members if you do these in your club. They can be formal or informal. 
but you want to ask a prospective member why he or she wants to join the club, about special interests, about what they like and don't like, how do they like to be recognized for accomplishments. This is a two-way street. You want to know about your new lion just as much as your new lion wants to know about you. Will it be a good match? Be upfront with the time and financial commitments. And a lot of times we try to not emphasize those. But new lions want to know what will be expected of them. Let them know before they join what their financial and time commitments are. Tell them about dues, how much they are and how they are paid, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Do the dues include the cost of a meal? Are there any other financial expectations of members, like buying a minimum number of barbecue tickets if you aren't able to sell your quota? About the time. When are the meetings and how long might they be expected to last? When are the major fundraisers and projects? How much time is involved? This might seem like too much information, but it is better for a new lion to know this up front rather than to have to resign after joining due to an inability to meet the commitments. Share your successes. Tell the new lion about things that you have done. Do you support the children's camp? Or have you had a Peace Poster winner? Has someone that your club has helped gone on, helped gone on to no longer need your help? You can share these stories without names and not breaking confidences. Networking potential. Tell your prospective member who your club members are and something about them. If the new lion is if the lion is new to the area or doesn't know your members, this can be a big help. Invite to a service project. Inviting a potential member to help at a service project is a way to show this possible lion what we do best. We serve. And then plan on immediate evolve, involvement. When you have a new lion, assign to that new lion to an active committee immediately. It may be that the assignment can be made even before she or he, if he has formally joined. Giving a lion a responsibility gives that lion a reason to be at a meeting or at an event. Try to keep everyone involved. Remember why we joined. We, we want to focus on service. Lions sometimes get too tied up in the means, and they forget the end goal is to serve. We want, some people are looking for a sense of community. We work together toward a sense of community in your club. This requires lions getting to know each other so that they can care about each other, just as they care about those they serve. Match the activities and assignments with the interests of the lions. This will ensure that lions are working from their strength or using skills that they are interested in building. Lion Judy? Yes. I just I wanted I was thinking as you were talking before about the interest surveys that we would give to potential and new members when they come on board and I think I just I wanted to reinforce that that's a good idea for all of our members I've been surprised over and over how many times I've learned new things about the Lions in my club or a nearby club that I've known for many years but I learned something new about them and their interests outside of lionism that could be of benefit and of interest for ways to get involved within their Lions Club. And so um, I don't think that's something to be embarrassed about. You all, I mean, our interests evolve and change over time. And so I really think asking and not just assuming we know what our current Lions Club members' interests are is a, a big aspect of the, the retention and, and maintaining motivation in our clubs. Thank you, Lion Wendy. In fact, that's another suggestion is that you have a semi-formal kind of interest inventory where you're going to ask them about the kinds of things they would like to do and the kinds of new things they want to learn and 
update these interest inventories, if not annually, at least biannually. Okay, and from there, member, member interaction. It is important that all the lions have the opportunity and time to interact with each other and not just with the same lions at every club meeting and every event. I like to say that, you know, you can't get to like someone unless you get to know them. And you're not going to get to know them sitting in the same corner with the same people talking about the same things at every meeting. Um, opportunities for growth. This can be growth in skills, growth in social contact, growth in service. Each one of these factors or any combination of them can result in a growth in self-esteem, a motivator in and of itself. Okay, and there are so many of these that we're going to even continue them on. Or we're going to talk about, I'm sorry, practical application in, in your club. Acknowledge service at every meeting. One club I know has written a short statement acknowledging what they have done and what they continue to do. And they recite it in the opening ceremony of each meeting, sort of like a pledge. Uh, one pledge could be, we pledge to serve the, uh, the hungry of our community by providing uh, auxiliary groceries for three families who we know that are in need. And something to that effect just reminds everybody that we are doing good things, even though everybody is not always involved and always aware that it's happening. Remind the Lions of accomplishments, things from the past, and more recent service. I remember I was asked at one point to uh, say why I was a proud to be a West Penn Lion when I was in that club. And I said that I was proud to be a West Penn Lion because I knew that the first project that that club had done in 1948 was to electrify the one-room schoolhouses. There were six one-room schoolhouses in that township, and the club had electrified them. And I thought that was a neat thing to know. Have benchmarks for long-term projects. Long-term projects can really become tedious, but to help lions stay enthusiastic, celebrate the success of defined benchmarks along the way. Conduct lions business at lions meetings, either regular meetings or board meetings. It is quite disheartening for lions to discover that a few key lions have made decisions and acted on things that were discussed outside the club, and they then expect the club members to rubber stamp them after the fact. Have regular and predictable meetings. Lions should be able to plan ahead about the dates and times of meetings. They should know if they are going to be dinner meetings and what will be expected of them at the meeting. Being predictable doesn't mean boring. Little surprises from the tail twister can be a big plus. And finally, lead by example. A leader should never expect a lion to do something he or she would not be willing to do. A leader should model the behavior that is expected from others. If anybody can hear the old teacher in me, that's the old teacher coming out. Model the behavior you expect from your students. Okay, now here's where I had it continued. Communicate regularly. It is important to keep all lions involved and on the same page. Electronic communication works very well for everyday items, but it is some, something, if there is something unusual, time sensitive, or extremely important, personal contact is better. If you have included communication on your interest inventory, you can use the primary type of communication selected by each lion. Celebrate success, even small successes. A celebration could be as small as a group pat on the back or as large as a full-fledged party. Black tie, if that's what your club would like. Lead lions, managed systems or events. When people are led, following is their choice, 
and their self-motivation confirms what they will do. When people are managed, the whole choice is that of the manager. The choice of the individual is to stay or to leave. Frequent self-evaluation. If it is worth doing, it's worth knowing whether we did well. On things like fundraising events. Did we achieve our financial goal? Was the profit worth the amount of time and effort invested? Is this something that is supported by our community? If no, was it the event itself, the reason for the fundraiser, or some other outside factor that caused the lack of support? Service activities. They should be evaluated on a periodic basis to determine whether they are still appropriate for the community and effective for the recipients we are helping. I would recommend that the community needs assessment from LCI be done periodically. It's not something that needs to be done every year, but every five years or every ten years, there could be enough change in your community that there is a need to do something like that. And finally, your club. Is your club relevant to its members? Is it relevant to the community? I would suggest doing the club excellence process and or the club blueprint for a stronger club. Both of these programs are available from the LCI. Have fun. The business of being a lion is a serious business. It is a responsibility that a lion takes on in addition to all his other family, employment, religious, and community involvement. A Lions Club where the Lions get along well, where the members have fun both at work and at play, is a club that will last because the members won't get burned out. Having fun while being a Lion will lighten the load and keep Lions coming back. And Lions should look forward to their meetings. Make the meeting something that the Lions don't want to miss. Great food, the joy of being with fellow Lions and the little unexpected things that can happen during the meeting. Put a surprise into the agenda. Give everyone something to do and a reason to be at each meeting. And now we have another survey question coming up. Have you ever lost your motivation in a Lions, in a Lions setting? And if yes, you may, if you choose, share. No names or any identifying information, please. Just share briefly what it might have been. Let's see, I have one hand that's, oh, it's been raised for a while, so it's not for this particular question. Uh, a couple of responses that are coming through. Um, I won't share names, but just uh, part of portions of the response. Um, it's not in front of a club meeting or project. I always try to be up and motivated, but may I fall off when I'm alone or after an event. Um, another response is, I haven't lost motivation for lionism. I've seen others lose it out of frustration with others and the things they do and say. I think that's a, a good uh, lesson for all of us to, to think before we speak, sometimes our mouth goes a little quicker than our brains. Um, it's something that my club is working on as part of this another response, working on, and it's something we need to be careful of. So great feedback. Um, another example is poor leadership, which was then later replaced by better leadership. Uh, I think something that affects many of our clubs is seeing only a few members carry the load of either a full event or a lot of the club's activities. Um, let's see, another response. People uh, temporarily losing the motivation by people who are too self-absorbed and, and taking joy from the serving and, and being with the others. Um, not being people, Members not being open to, to new ideas or new members and things that they bring to it, the, bring to the club. Uh, lions getting angry with other lions or unproductive bickering, 
about an event or at Lions Club meetings. So we have several examples, and, and it's a great, uh, a great challenge. Wait a minute, here's one response. Thankfully, not yet. So uh, thanks for, for sharing that one, too. Uh, so we have a couple more. I'm going to put these examples, again, out there on the, the forum because it's easy it's easy to think about other, you know, how other people behave without necessarily holding the mirror to our own behavior. And um, I think just glancing down through some of these, some of these that I've shared out loud. Um, how about when our leaders act more for political or personal reasons than for for the reason we're here as Lions Club members? So um, several of these I think are just good for us if we're going to be leaders. And as you mentioned earlier, Judy, with leading by example, um, these things that have kind of caused us to lose motivation as a group are things that, that we can be on the lookout again in our own behavior. So thank you all for sharing that and, and we will um, not attribute those in the, the forum. Right, and you know I think the interesting thing is that I mean it has it been an object lesson um, model the behavior that you would like to see in other lions and if you're not going to as a leader model appropriate behavior you're not going to have lions club to lead much longer it's, it, it can be a challenge to realize that you're we're always in front of people and even if you aren't in a so-called leadership position we're still influencing those around us so people watch our behavior whether we're we're actively leading or not so great lessons. The, the other idea that I picked up from this and I just wanted to mention it was that uh, none of the problems that I heard coming from Lion Wendy had anything to do with our mission and what we did. It only had to do with some of the ways that we're acting and when we're acting that way we're not acting as lions. Yeah, I or like lions. I should say like lions. <laughs> I, th I think sometimes we may hold ourselves to a higher standard, and I think if we treated each other as lions the same way we treat the people we serve, because we are serving each other also, um, then that would that would go far away towards towards some of these these behaviors. But um, but anyhow, I'll, I'm going to get off my little soapbox and mute myself again. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing, and, and uh, we will we'll share all of those responses with you. Okay, and I think we're ready to go on now. Re not everyone is motivated by public rec recognition, but I have never met anyone who didn't appreciate a, a sincere pat on the bank, back or thank you. Different motivators are for different lions. Not one size fits all. Some appreciate public rec recognition, others prefer to have it be done in private. There are formal and informal awards or rewards. Many of the formal awards are defined by Lions Clubs International or by the district structure. Don't forget the informal and maybe sometimes silly awards. They can mean more because of the thought and effort of your club or district Lions that went into putting the recognition together. The entrance or preference inventory again to get the input from each lion. Ask the lion how they would like to be recognized. Would they like uh, formal recognition or would they, would they really appreciate not being singled out? But develop a plan and be sure to recognize or congratulate each lion at some time in the year because each lion is giving and doing and sharing what he has to give and do and share. Okay, so now we'll talk about some practical, practical examples of rewards and recognition. Survey lines about recognition, as I said, as part of the club information. Update regularly, just as you would phone, email address, or whatever. What are some of the things we might use? Certificates and plaques. Certificates are easy, inexpensive, and can be made very personal. Caution. Make sure they look professional, that your printer has plenty of ink of the right color, and everything is spelled and aligned correctly. Plaques are more, getting more expensive every year. 
and many lines don't have the space to display them. So those, that's one particular kind. Fellowships and other donations, a gift that keeps on giving. The recognition that comes after making a donation in an individual's name is appreciated not only because of the help that will come to someone in need, but also because the re recipient realizes the investment of time and effort that went into earning the money to make the donation. When I have been uh, honored with the opportunity to present Melvin Jones Fellowships, I like to tell, say to the Lions, think about how many chickens had to be bar barbecued or how many pancakes had to, had to be flipped in order to earn that, that recognition from the club. And then think about how many people's eyesight might be saved because of that donation. It really is a double-edged sword, a good double-edged sword. Recognition in the media. Every lion deserves the opportunity to appear in a newspaper photo or a television spot. Some may respectfully decline. Others will appreciate it. It may be the president's year, but it's the lions who are doing, who are doing the work. Handwritten notes. One of the least frequent but most appreciated ways to say thank you. I've got a pile of them, a small pile, that I just cannot throw away because I can appreciate the time that somebody took to say thank you. And phone calls, emails, and social media. When at all possible, use the most personal. I'm learning a lot more about social media. And I realize that sometimes a congratulations on social, me so social media is really good because it's giving that person more exposure. But at the same time, maybe the person doesn't want the exposure. So the more personal you can get it, I think the best it, it is. OK. Birthday celebrations. Every line can be honored every year in the month of his or her birthday. I have to tell you a quick little story. In the club that I formerly belonged to, we sang happy birthday for whoever was having the birthday. And uh, it happened at one of our summer meetings that there was a birthday celebration. And it was a family night. And one of the members' grandchildren were there. We were toned and totally toned deaf. We had the worst rendition of happy birthday you have ever wanted to hear. And she came, went up to her grandfather and said, is that the way they always sing? And he said, yes, it is. And she said, oh, well, you know what? I counted ahead, and my birthday is going to be on a Lions night next year. Can I come to your club and have them sing to me? And she did, and we did. So something silly can turn out to be something that people enjoy. Lion of the month or the year. It's in a tradition in some clubs. It's a really good idea, but you have to make sure that you're passing it around. And yes, it has to be earned and deserved, but you don't want to give it to the same person four or five times and have other people who haven't been recognized. The opportunity to serve as a delegate to a convention. This is especially meaning to new Lions and first-time attendees to a convention to be the one that is going to vote, use the delegate pass for his, their club. Opportunity to attend training. For the Lion who joined to acquire new skills or enhance current skills, this can be an important form of recognition. A lot of people don't like to propose themselves. They want somebody else to suggest that they're ready to attend a certain training, and they don't want to nominate themselves. Be creative. Build the reward to suit the lion. With the diversity of our membership, the choice is limited, limitless. So I think that uh, that is really the, the main thing that I have in my part tonight. I hope that we have been able to give you some ideas 
uh, I'll put it back to Lion Wendy to go over the objectives and tell us how much time we have to do some sharing, if possible. But thank you for the opportunity to be with you, and uh, have a good year. Thank you, Lion Judy. We uh, I've put the the objectives of today's session back up on the screen, and I I hope you'll agree with me that uh, that we've done pretty good covering the objectives for for this webinar. Um, I, I particularly liked all the different ideas and suggestions for recognition and rewards, and what I just kind of look at it as acknowledgement. And again, as Lion leaders at any level in our club. Think about the things that, that we had on this list, and I would challenge each of us to not make this the responsibility of the club president or of just a, a recognition committee, but you know, writing a handwritten note or sending a, an email or making a phone call and, and thanking a fellow lion for their contributions and just acknowledging them as peers is, I found personally to be the most meaningful recognition that I've gotten. Um, less so from somebody standing at the front of the room making a presentation, but, but more from knowing that I've made an impact in, to, to my peers. But um, we do have about five minutes, and so if, if anyone would like to share comments verbally, you can raise your hand if you have other suggestions or ideas as far as particularly the practical applications of things that we've talked about this evening associated with motivation. So I'll give you just a minute if anyone is interested in doing that. You can raise your hand and we will unmute you. And I've got a couple of hands that it looks like they're raised, but I can't tell if it's from now or if it was from earlier. Lion Dawn, I'm going to unmute you and feel free to say that if, if it's relevant to this question or not. No, it's re relevant to now. I think I just had a sort of a, a question slash comment. The um, members that maybe are motivated by position and recognition, do you run the risk of really feeding maybe an animal you don't want to feed when you do that? I, I know there's that fine line where you want them recognized for a job well done, but you don't want them to be um, out of control with their um, their um, thoughts of themselves in, uh, or their position as it is. I mean, we're really here for a good thing, not a negative thing. And, and a lot of the comments that were made seem to surround lions behaving poorly. And, you know, so I think there's that fine balance there about not making them um, want to behave more poorly, but to recognize them for a job well done at the same time. Lion Judy? Yes, that, that's a, a very good comment. And of course, one of the things in doing some of the recognitions is that you will uh, give more recognition to those who are behaving well. And when that happens, uh, maybe those who are behaving poorly will sort of see what the picture is all about. <laughs> Behavior <laughs> modification. <laughs> you will reward the behaviors that are the ones you want to see again. I think there is a, a, a potential for that, but I also think in the earlier information where we referred to people's need for power is, is not necessarily power as a bad thing. It could just be influence. And so um, just another, another aspect to, to consider. But um, certainly the <laughs> Judy's, Judy's on with her response there. I uh, had a, a response come in on the questions pane. Lion Joy shared that she gives a thank you coin for little things. And Lion Joyce, if you can post another response, if that's something custom that you had made up or if that's something that's that you buy in bulk, um, she uses it to when people help with setting up meeting space without being asked or other things that they, they just um, the people do kind of going above and beyond. And so I like the idea of a little thank you coin, um, whether that's something that is, is unique to her or has the Lions logo or or some other type of of just a, a little kind of memento. So great uh, great idea there. 
So I think we, we are getting close to the end of our time. So to, to keep within the one hour um, time frame that we are looking at, um, there uh, I'll go through the last couple of items. As a reminder, some of you um, have been participating in courses, and you don't actually need to register as part of Lions University, but for us to give you credit for completing the courses, uh, you need to have a profile on the Lions Forum website. And so this link, members.lionsforum.org, is where you go to set up your membership profile. And if you have not been to the forum in 2013 or 2014, you may not have a profile yet. If you've been to one of those two USA Canada Alliance Leadership Forums, you can use the email that you use to register. Um, if you forgot your password, there's a, a way to get that retrieved. Uh, but if you didn't attend that event or if you're just participating in Lions University courses, you can select the Activate Membership option fill out your contact information and then you'll, there'll be a place where you just you select being a Lions University student and actually you can see it on this screen it's the the fourth option here so um, please do that because that's where we keep a list of all the courses that will be offered and we check mark those as they get completed um, we've referenced a couple of times today the discussion board that will be going on from now till forever I hope I hope we we continue to have a good conversation about our own motivation and how we can um, help influence the motivation of our fellow lions so you can go to the forum website which is lionsforum.org and reach the discussion boards from that point um, this is a reminder that we need you to take the quiz to get credit, but um, I would ask that you not run and do that right now because it's come to my attention that there are a couple of questions that the background information, uh, when I put that in, I cut and paste the wrong information. So um, I've got a couple of edits to make to the questions, which I'll do immediately after this webinar. Um, you can go back to the course page, which um, member motivation is course number 108 of the bachelor's program. So you can you can find us easily there and click the link um, for the course quiz. But like I said, I'm going to need just a few minutes after our webinar this evening to to make sure that um, that I correct what we cut and paste. We have some really interesting scenarios for you to think about there and uh, may have a had a little operator error. So I'll get that taken care of as soon as we're done here. And with that, would like to let you know about our next webinar. The next one will be public relations. And this is another one of the required courses of the bachelor program. Um, it has been rescheduled. I sent uh, many of you a message if you had pre-registered for it uh, for November 12th. We've had to bump that out a couple of weeks. So it is scheduled for December 3rd. And this will actually give us a couple of weeks as a leadership team for Lions University to take a lot of the lessons that we've learned through these first five webinars and finalize processes so that we can um, be able to continue to improve as we learn as well as everyone else. So uh, we will um, Again, look forward to seeing many of you if you're interested in public relations on December 3rd, and it would encourage you to share that with, um, with other fellow Lions that you think would be interested in that topic. So with that, there are a few questions that folks have asked in the questions pane, and I will take care of those. But otherwise, uh, we are done for this session. Thank you so much for participating, sharing your ideas, and continuing to, to want to grow in your Lions experience. So thank you all and thank you Lion Judy again for, for some great information and perspective that you shared with, you, with us.